Today it's a long run review of the Nike Zoom Air Tempo Next Percent. Hey cats and dogs, Ed Bud here, your friendly neighbourhood non-elite runner. I was bitten by the bug and now I can't stop propelling myself forward with my legs, supported by a vast array of midsole allies. Today I've got a long run rundown for you of the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent. So not my typical route today, taking in 14 miles of the fantastic West Country scenery. Only it was cold, windy, rainy, very grey, and the floor in places was covered by what can only be described as sludge. We had temperatures of about 9 degrees Celsius, which is 48.2 Fahrenheit, if you want to get technical. I had some winds up to 20 miles an hour to contend with at one stage of the run. I think it was around about mile 6. It was pretty horrific. There's a section there which is by an open airfield. I've got to be honest, it was punishing. I think quite close to my experience of running around like a loon on Western Supermare Beach last December. Fortunately though, today the gear selection was on point for the conditions that I experienced. I felt pretty good. Aside from my hands, there is a necessity to get some new running gloves. Viewers, do let me know your favorite selections for hand warming attire down in the comments. So 14 miles today, 22.5 kilometers, about 385 foot of elevation across the route, clocked in at roughly seven minutes, 25 seconds per mile average pace, which equates to four minutes, 36 per kilometer. Total time of one hour, 44 minutes, and some really consistent heart rate stats throughout from about mile one to mile 11, just staying there within zone three quite nicely, just letting things tick over. A bit like a petrol powered lawn mower. I did pick things up a little bit though from miles 12 to 13 just to see if I still had some juice left in the tank and I did. Getting down just below seven minutes per mile on the last mile there and a bit of a cool down in mile 14 just to get me home. Good to get some more aerobic miles in this week and also to get a 50 mile week under my belt once again. Been quite a few weeks since I've got one of those so I'm feeling good about that. Oh yeah. So, you may ask, how did the shoes hold up? Gotta be honest, they're still quite wet. I've had to clean these quite profusely. I did pair the Tempo Next Percent today with some brand new Nike racing socks. They're white as well, and now they're just completely wrecked. <laughs> Both the shoes and the socks today got well and truly coated in grime. I did put a few shots up on Strava. You can see those now on the screen. Cleaned though with my soft brush and some of that magic dish soap or washing up liquid as we call it here in the UK. Does anyone else call it that? Washing up liquid, because that's pretty much the only thing you can use it for other than cleaning shoes. They've come up pretty well. I might have to give them another go in the toe box there. They're kind of looking still brown, but the rest of the shoe looks great. And the outsole, absolutely fine. The shoes today performed admirably in the upper. They were consistent and maintained a great comfortable feel over the miles. No reservations about that whatsoever today. Really impressed actually with the fit and feel, certainly with those Nike socks as well. It was a dream team. I've got to say, the flyknit wasn't really that tough to clean. I think if I filled up the toe box there with some more absorbent sort of paper and then give them another go, I think they'll come out just fine. Maybe I'll buy some rejuvenator stuff though. I can see everybody's using that. I do particularly like watching some of Vic Almighty's rejuvenator shoe customizations. Go and check some of those out if you've got five minutes to spare. Yeah, no time my propulsive friends here were looking as fresh as a daisy. Not quite as fresh though as these Jordan 35 DNAs that I've just picked up. Casual review coming up for these very soon. What a crazy shoe. You can actually almost see through it. Jewel airbags there. What a great looking shoe. Not sure I want to be running in that one, but I shall be doing some recovery in that one, definitely. To the midsole now. As I've mentioned before, when I've discussed this shoe in some depth, this is certainly one for the midfoot to forefoot crew. On today's steady effort, those Zoom AirPods in the front here really did work a treat, providing some cushion, but a more aggressive feel underfoot. A foam midsole base shoe really isn't gonna provide the same aggressive feel as the Tempo Next Percent does. I kinda like it. Doesn't take no for an answer, this one. You gotta push it. There's no point trying to run some easy miles in this, just not designed for it. The more juice you put in, the more they seem to supply back to you. And there are some paces there that I got to on the run today, closer to seven minutes per mile, and things really started to flow. A bit like the Bellamy brothers, I was certainly letting the miles flow. 
I've got to say those quicker miles at the end of today's effort were really quite enjoyable. I tried my best to navigate around the hordes of people that were out today, seemingly unable to comply with the current outdoor social distancing rules. It's like you can meet a person and there were groups of like six, seven, eight people just stood around right in the middle of the path. What are you supposed to do? The Zoom X and React setup here really does work very well for me. And I can see that Tempo Next% percent midsole holding up over the miles and it's top in terms of the durability stakes. I think it's gonna go on and on this one like the Duracell bunny. I have tested a few shoes out that the midsoles just kind of disappeared after a while. A bit like the juice in a Poundland battery. Let's talk the considerable outsole. It might be considerable in terms of rubber weight here, but it's considerable in terms of performance too. Great grip on the paths. No issues on the leaves and the sludge. Even when taking evasive action, these really worked out actually on pure mud. One had to leap onto the grass sections either side of the path. No slipping today. Those ridges seem to really work, possibly even a bit better than the Alpha Fly. I mean, there's a little bit more rubber there. Felt very assured today. Never once felt like I was gonna slip over like some sort of deer on an icy pond. I'm rather enamored with my Tempo Next% percent friends here. So this one easily ate up the long run today. A little bit like a very hungry Ed Bud demolishes a very delicious hot pizza. What have been your experiences so far in the Tempo Next% percent from Nike? It's a bit of a Marmite shoe. Some people love this one, some people can't get on with it at all. I'm certainly in that category of getting on with it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Just a quick heads up, the channel merch seems to finally have appeared down in the store section of the YouTube channel. So please go and check that out. There's a load of different things there. Don't forget, Christmas is coming. It's time for a musical interlude. I dug back out Bernard Butler's second album. He only did two really, and it's called Friends and Lovers. A bit overlooked this one. It got released in 1999, but sadly right on when the record label that it was released on went out of business, they just disappeared. Creation Records, there were so many great bands on that label. Teenage Fan Club, Oasis even were on Creation at one point. It's a bit more direct this album, there's a few less overdubs and Bernard Butler's gone for a more pure sort of sound. I already love the title track, Friends and Lovers, there's really infectious riff there. I remember seeing him actually in Portsmouth, I think it was, and he was playing this black Les Paul with a Bixby. Oh man, what a sound. I remember his pedals uh, failed at one point and he just plugged the guitar straight into the amp and it sounded even better. There's some more rocky tracks I like on this one. You Must Go On is a great track. We've all thought, oh, you must go on at some point during a run, maybe during a race, and that one's a real call to arms. Let's Go Away is a really great track with some nice interweaving guitar parts, but the piece de resistance is track 11. Has Your Mind Gone Away is this winding tune with this sort of wire effect on the guitar. Really fantastic stuff. Not many people have even heard of this album because it really didn't get an awful lot of promotion around the time of release. So do go and check it out. Bernard Butler with Friends and Lovers. Okay, that's about all for today, guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the very end. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when those new videos are launched. It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.